When I found this piece at the thrift store, my first thought was, one of these things is not like the other. Two different style pieces being sold as one. How did it get like this? After talking to the furniture staff at the thrift store, I learned that they are shipping all furniture back to the central warehouse and then redistributing pieces to the stores in the area. I would assume the pieces were mixed up or they were donated individually, and someone got creative and put the two together. Either way, I ended up purchasing the lower half, and the top portion was too large to transport and incredibly heavy to move by myself, so I ended up redonating that piece. The condition of this piece is actually really great for its age. There's a lot of scratching on the top that looks fresh. I'm going to assume this is from the heavy hutch top that was placed on it, and the obvious thing here is that it's missing its legs. For this project, we're going to give this piece some new legs using something a bit unconventional and then we're going to revive the existing finish. At the end of last year, I purchased a lot of 20 bat barrels off of eBay for $65. Furniture legs, especially mid-century modern style legs, can be very pricey, even in used condition. So when I saw these bats, I immediately thought of furniture legs. They are not all exactly the same size, so I ended up sorting through them to pick the most similar sized legs. Now, I don't own a lathe, to trim these down to the same size, but I recently discovered that there are jigs that you can make to size and round furniture legs, so I may be looking at that in the future. Before we attach the new leg structure to the bottom, we're gonna to need to remove all of the leftover bits from the previous legs and smooth everything out. To cut the bats, I'm gonna use my miter saw. This was not very exacting or precise in the way of cutting because the bats were not exactly level. So I found that if I cut them to size, but then came back and just trimmed the ends by turning the bat in different directions, that it would give me a flatter cut. At the end, I ended up sanding the ends down after they were attached to the piece to make them more level. I needed to flip the piece over to help figure out how I wanted to attach the legs, and I ended up making some really interesting discoveries in the process.
As always, there are several different ways to get the legs to attach to any piece of furniture. Now for this credenza, I'm going to use hanger bolts and T-nuts. For that reason, I chose to attach some oak plywood to the bottom of the piece. I had some extra just laying around, so I just cut it slightly smaller than the depth of the credenza so that it would be less noticeable once it was attached, but it would also provide extra support for the piece. I made a design choice not to cover up the plies with the oak veneer, but if you use plywood and you wanted to hide it, I would recommend attaching edge banding to the piece before you attach these pieces to the bottom. I pre-drilled the oak plywood and ended up attaching them using wood screws and wood glue. To find the center of the legs, I used digital calipers to figure out the diameter across, and then I split that in half and marked two points on the leg to drill into. The hanger bolts were screwed in by first attaching two nuts to the end that were then tightened together. Then I used a ratchet to get better torque for screwing them into the leg. I put in some CA glue before I screwed the bolt in as well to make sure it was secure, but there is a time limit to this, so you have to be relatively quick about it, which makes using the ratchet better. Two of the first legs that I put hanger bolts in were not in far enough, so I ended up trimming the ends off using my Dremel. I'll link the discs that I used in the description below in case you need to do this.
In order to drill a hole large enough for the T-nut to set inside of, I ended up having to buy an entire new drill bit set. And I also tested this out on a piece of plywood before I ended up drilling into the credenza just to make sure everything fit. If you were really particular about the T-nut actually sticking out of where you're screwing it into, you can use a Forstner bit and drill into wherever you're installing it, and that will make it flat with the surface. In this case, it's not sticking out very much, but again, it just depends on preference. I took a bit of time to make the decision to use toner dye on the legs and the base. I tested a scrap piece of legs and when I applied the toner directly to the leg without any shellac or a base coat, it gave me the best results. So I ended up applying three light coats to the base and legs and then I sealed it with aerosol polyurethane. I contemplated at length removing the finish on this credenza, and I ultimately decided not to and opted instead to rejuvenate the existing finish. This is very much not my normal process, but I really like this finish on the piece, which again is very uncharacteristic for me. To start the rejuvenation process as we're calling it, I'm going to start off by cleaning the piece off. I chose to use Simple Green just because that's what I had on hand, but if you have a TSP cleaner um, or a TSP substitute or any degreaser, what you're going to want to do is clean everything down so that you can remove any waxes or oils and dirt from the piece. I chose to use Howard's Restora finish in the color Walnut to help rejuvenate and bring back some of that original color, and this is also going to help remove some of the lighter scratches on the piece. I chose to use 4 aught steel wool because of the scratches, but you can use a cloth if you don't have a lot of scratching on the piece that you're trying to rejuvenate. The recommended follow-up after you apply the Restora finish is to use Howard's Feed and Wax. So I went in and did an application of Howard's Feed and Wax not only to the surfaces that I used Restora finish on, but I also applied it to the drawers as well. The hardware was plated, so as I tried to polish it, I contemplated and ended in a coat of clean metal primer, followed by the selection of Rust-Oleum Pure Gold. This would make them look a bit finer. Light coats have a better hold. Finish this off with some clear coat. The reality of adding furniture legs to pieces is there are so many different options out there. But don't be afraid to be creative and try something different.
If you've made it this far in the video, make sure you drop a good baseball or bat pun below, and then check out my other videos. More projects to come, so also make sure that you subscribe. Thanks for watching.